So if I've got a working automation with this switch right here, why would I want to change it over to a Zigbee? Well, I gotta say delay is the biggest reason. From the time I push this button till the time that that fan goes on, and the automations that run with the associated device can take up to five minutes. That's the polling interval on the Wi-Fi device. So let's see if Zigbee does any better. Now before you've gone even this far, you should already make sure that the breaker is out on the panel so that you don't electrocute yourself. So I gotta put the disclaimer out there. Kids, do not try this at home. In fact, probably nobody else should try this at home. The only problem is, which breaker do I flip? Which one do I turn? If they're labeled, and they're labeled well, it's pretty easy. But if not, I'll just have to use my magic breaker selector tool. Next, to make sure that the power is in fact out, we're gonna need Whistling Pete. Now, because these tools frequently don't work, or you don't know if the batteries in here are dead, I always test it with a live working plug before uh, I stick my fingers in there anyway. Now that I know that the plug is dead, I'm safe to move around in here, so I'm gonna take out the old switch and put the new one in. Alrighty, so we got the uh, old switch out, and uh, the new one's a little bit different on the back, as you can see here. The only thing left to do is turn on the power, make sure I hooked everything up correctly and then connect it up to my Hubitat and uh, select the automation I want. Okay, so from the bottom end here before I power it up, I'm gonna make sure my Hubitat is ready. So to do that, I just click on the devices, add a device, and it's a Zigbee switch. And now before I do this, we're gonna make sure that the power is on and we'll see if it connects up. Okay, breaker is on. Let's see if we can get uh, any luck. We start the pairing. Now look at that, found a Zigbee device initializing. So that's pretty painless. So far that's been one of the many things I like about Zigbee. Uh, anything I've paired up so far has been super quick and easy. And now we're just gonna name it Light switch two words or one? Whatever. It's gonna be two today, I guess. And that's gonna go up to our master bedroom. Perfect. Switch is added. Great, now that we uh, know it all works, uh, we'll put the cover back on and fix up the automation. All right, so if you're following along in Hubitat, the uh, first thing you're gonna need to do is head back onto the devices. And we're gonna find our old switch here. You can see that there's two labeled bedroom light switch. Now, this is the GE, the new switch we just installed. This is the old one. So to move the automations over, an easy way to do this is just to go to the bottom here and you'll see in use by. So we have it in use on the dashboard, the furnace fan to circulate and the occupancy mode. So I'll go over, I'll change them over to the uh, new switch one at a time. I'll also rename this, uh, and I know this is gonna have a future intended use of a Christmas light switch. So we will save that right away. So it's easy for me to differentiate between the two and I'll move the automations over. So to start out with, let's head over to dashboard and we will find our switch. Oh, look at that, it just changed the label for me, so there's nothing else I need to do there other than move it. We'll go to the apps and set occupancy mode. And we can see here that the Christmas light switch is no longer gonna be the case. So we're gonna edit that trigger to bedroom light switch. It's interesting, it even knows what I want there. Oh, <laughs> it just hasn't updated the name. All right, so let's try that again. That's better. Update that, done with this trigger. 
done with that event. And we'll see if there's any other Christmas lights, which is two in here, three in here, four in here. So we'll change all of those events. This might be the uh, easy solution here. So let's try editing that and see if the other ones fall into place. That's good. Good, but it doesn't change in the uh, rules up here. It's a shame that I can't edit it this way. Let's try this. No, it's not letting me. Uh... Double conditions. Let's try that. Okay, so that's a roundabout way of doing it. It's not nice, but it definitely did the trick. So I'll do the same for the other three here, and uh, we'll get back uh, to testing it out. All right, so as you can see, I've got all the uh, modes updated and bedroom light switches on in any of the variables here, so he should be set. We'll just click on update rule and done. Last place we're gonna go is furnace fan to circulate. And I realize some of you probably wanna see me do these because this is a bit of a pain in the butt if you do decide to change your switch. So here we go. Bear with me. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, click on the set of rules to get in there, go into the manage conditions, and we got two Christmas light switches. We're just going to change that to our new bedroom switch. Sorry, update done, edit the other one, change that to bedroom light switch, update and done. Done with conditions. Now, what I really would like if Hubitat had taken and then made the affected conditions follow through with the... Now what I really would have appreciated if Habitat would have taken the conditions and associated with the if statements so that everything would have updated, that would have been awesome because this is a bit of a pain in the butt. So to start it with, anywhere that Christmas light show was up, edit the action, edit the if statement, and we want to insert a statement anytime we see bedroom light switch, so we're going to do that. And we're going to insert the same one that we had. Bedroom light switch is off, bedroom light switch is off. And then we're going to delete the first one. Click anywhere else to disappear. To done editing the expression. Done with the if then. And you'll see it updates up top here as well. So. I'll go through the other ones and we'll just fast forward so you guys can now watch. All right, just a final check to make sure that we uh, did delete them all. And I'll just kind of read through them here, skim through to make sure I didn't miss any of them. They are all done, and if we haven't done so already, click on update rule and done to just make all the changes take effect. Then we're gonna go back to devices, and we're gonna go to our Christmas light switch, which is the one that we renamed. It's in use by the dashboard, and that's okay. I'm gonna be using it there anyway. We're going to head to dashboard quickly. I'm just going to move it to an open spot because I'm going to put those in a separate place later on. 
And we'll add our new switch in here right away. At the top, we're gonna have it too wide. And we want our bedroom light switch. Oh yes, before it shows up here, forgot one step. We have to go to apps, dashboard, click on this box, click on here to enable it for the dashboard, update, done, dashboard, dashboard. And we can click on add, take our switch, there it is, too wide, over here, and it is a switch. And we can add the tile. And there's our new light switch added in. Now we'll just double check our automations and see if that all works. As you can see, that's instantaneous, so that's a huge win for me. As you can see, the Zigbee switch is a whole heck of a lot faster than the Wi-Fi and that's just because of the communications overhead that go to the hub. Now what I could have done alternatively is refreshed on the Hubitat a whole heck of a lot more uh, often, but the downside to doing that is if you have a bunch of Wi-Fi switches, which I already have a bunch of automations and Wi-Fi, it takes up a lot of data and use of uh, CPU on the Hubitat, whereas the Zigbee takes a fraction uh, it's about a quarter of the data usage or throughput to get instantaneous results. And that's already comparing to about uh, every five minute polling intervals on the Wi-Fi switch. So this for me is a clear win. Uh, are the Wi-Fi switches useless? Absolutely not. If there's something that you want to just turn off or on with a Wi-Fi switch, it's a win. But if you're using it like I am to control automations for a thermostat and other automations throughout the house, I think uh, Zigbee is the clear winner here.